We are now recording. La di da, la di da, da da. We'll play the play the intro. Does does it say we're live yet? Uh, should be up any second now. There it is. Da, da, la, la, there we go. Hey, welcome back to Drop the Mic, Michael Bonehead. And yeah. Paula. And we've got Ta Records with us. Let's get into it here. Little What's up? Try, little Thank drop the mic man. intro. Drop that way mic. I don't have to. That way it doesn't have to, you know, be edited in later. Because I'm a lazy ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, all right, here we go. Now. I'm gonna try this one more time because. I kind of forgot to unmute it. All right, it's there. We go. It's all yours. Over. You start off this time. <laughs> gotcha. So, Tyler Records, man. Tell What's up? About your, tell us about yourself, brother. Tell us about uh about uh Tyler Records and and you know the music you guys represent and and uh you know your journey so far. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Tyler Records. If you're not into the whole brevity thing, it's twice as high records. And that's, uh, so the label was discovered by my duo. So musically, I, I work with my partner, Jojo. We're double eagle. And uh, we've been recording stuff for 20-something years. Um, for instance, high school, we started recording stuff in college. Actually, we started recording when we were driving back in his car. That was, uh, you know, 19... 57 i don't know what boat with no radio at all so we uh we used to just make up songs driving back and we were like damn we should record this so we started recording stuff and we did that for about five years or so and then we moved to different parts of the country different parts of the world and uh then it was um um 2020 where well actually it was the, the year before that he moved back to north carolina so i'm from north carolina that's where that's where we're both from, and I live in Virginia now, but he lived way off somewhere else, and uh, so we moved back to North Carolina, and we were like, well, damn, we got to get, get together, and we had always kept in touch and everything, but we hadn't recorded anything. We'd even make stuff up, text back and forth and all that, so uh, we, we, we're we about six hours apart, six hours drive. He's down outside of Charlotte. I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia, Colonial Williamsburg, so we rented an airbnb about halfway between us in the woods we like to get cabins in the woods and um got it for three nights and just brought a bunch of equipment and started recording and um that was uh actually that that was march 2020 and right when we got back was when the lockdown started um but that's a totally <laughs> different story that we don't need to but that was that that was right before that so this isn't even a uh you know one of those pandemic projects we did this legit before that any of that even started. And um, so we really liked the, We did that three more times. The next time we got another cabin in the woods, got it for four nights. We brought all of our food, all of our beer, everything we brought in. We stayed there for four nights, just recorded, slept, ate, partied, recorded, et cetera, four days. And um, after that, we had, we had a song that we really liked. And we we're like, well, damn, I've always... I'm a completely obsessive record collector, and uh, I, um, I've i always wanted to have something that I thought would be, you know, record a song that I think would sound good on a record, and, um, well, damn, we've got to have a label, twice as high, so twice as high records, we discovered that as a label, and uh, it's from an old lyric, we had a song, Double Eagle Flying Twice as High, so it's from that, and, um, yeah. 
that's what we started just re- re- releasing a single by double eagle and then i was like well shit I, if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this so i started you know looking into how to release other stuff and um recorded a compilation lp with 10 artists on it um with trent lundy who was on your show um black eye butterflies nice. on there who we were just talking about um and uh eight other people juxta who i know has uh has has songs on the uh on on rotation on here um uh whole psionic tremors let's see who else I, I mean a lot of people all of whom i met through discord or through uh you know the whole crypto music thing and Ooh. um yeah and uh so that was the first lp released another single and uh now we're about to release a um a, a 10 inch ep by the stress cones which is billy Korg and black eye butterfly that's a uh, reggae 10 inch and um, that's going to be sweet. I should have that. I should have that in the next couple of weeks. If, unless the pressing plant's lying to me and going to lead me on for another couple of weeks, but we'll see. Um, and I've got like three or four more releases that I'm working on that are hopefully going to be out in the next year or two. And uh, yeah, just seeing what I can, I can make happen. Man. Be sure, be sure to let us know, man. We we we'd like to uh to know when the uh when when to hear when to hear you guys' uh next projects too. Yeah, so some of those, I'll well, I'll talk about one of them that I'm really excited about because it's getting close to being done. Um, so I'm a big fan. Sure. One, I say so what? I'm oh, sorry. Um, so uh, I'm a huge fan of the band Rush. One of my favorite bands of all time. Love them. Absolutely love them. And uh, so there's, we're, we're going to release a um, compilation of all Rush covers in complete, all different, all different styles. Double Eagle did a track. You can find that on SoundCloud, but I'm not going to, I don't want to say anything about the track list right now because still trying to, still trying to put everything together. But um, that's going to be nine tracks that are all Rush covers. We're going to have 21.12% of all uh of all profits going to a uh, cancer research, um, cancer research uh, um, charity, which actually Jim, the Jimmy V Foundation, because I also love college basketball, um, and went to NC State. So Jimmy V, Jimmy V Foundation, twenty one point twelve percent of all the profits is going to go to that. Um, commissioned a painting by a Rush fan who did a sweet painting that's going to be the front, and the back cover. Um, so yeah, I'm working on that, but no, we got you know we got to license all the all the uh, all the covers and uh, trying to hype it, trying to do an auction to raise a little money, raise a little. Uh, um, well, right, the the auction we're gonna do an auction of a bunch of of a bunch of rush related stuff, um, and uh, you know try and try and do a little raise it a little more for for cancer research charity, but also, um, but also you know create some hype. I mean, it's not just about the charity. I want people to know about it. And, so I can actually, you know, attempt to stay afloat and make more records. But um, so that's one of them. I'm really excited about that one. Um, oh, OK. I'll announce the the one after the stress cones. I'll 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 announce now because I don't think I've I've said yet, but it's good. I, I think I mentioned it to you on on message, but um, it's going to be a split single, another seven inch with junk feathers. Um, so junk feathers going to have an A side, double eagle on the B side. Um, so that hopefully I'm hoping, hoping that's going to be out for the uh, block party in Nashville in September. I'm really hoping it's going to be out by then. But I don't know if you all have heard about the uh, vinyl pressing industry right now is jammed every which way and everything is backed up and no one wants to. Apparently the job that no one wants at the pressing plants is to be the person who takes the records and puts them inside the sleeves that they can't find people to do those jobs apparently. <laughs> and there's uh there's too few pressing plants for the demand now. Um so but knock on wood, that single that'll be the fifth release. That single will hopefully be out by September. That's the plan. Oh man, that's so uh, anyhow, uh, what would be like the biggest influences that uh that that you have as a uh, being a musician and and running a label like 
What 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 influenced well, you? I'd say well, so for for the running the label thing, I really like the whole um, the whole punk rock do it yourself the DIY stuff from the early '80s, where you know a bunch of punk bands said, "Well, no one wants to put it up, put put our music out, so we'll just put it out ourselves, make our own label, and just do it." Um, Nike copyright Nike, um, but I am I so that's how I felt. Just you know, make make my own label. Why not? Um, instead of waiting around for someone else to maybe do it, just you know, start a label. So I'd say the early '80s, especially the DC punk rock scene, where I mean that 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 scene was crazy. Um, also, but it was it was it really got that whole DIY um, make your own punk label thing. So at, at, in the heart of it, I mean, it's the the punk the punk rock thing. Um, oh, what's up, Nahu Puku in the chat? What's going on, man? <laughs> Um, yeah, big up, dude. Double Eagle makes some, yes, thank you. Um, but, uh, uh, for Double Eagle, so I, 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 I play percussion, um, okay. and I, uh, I, I, I write lyrics. I'd say for lyrics, my biggest influence is Dr. Seuss, um, because, uh, Dr. Seuss is awesome. Um, <laughs> you're talking and, about the author, the, uh, the, the book writer? Yeah. Oh, Green yeah. eggs and ham, yeah, all yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that's he's my biggest influence. Um, I, yeah. Um, but you know, with 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 slight, it's like a adult content, Doctor Seuss. Um, you know, like if there was a Doctor <laughs> Seuss, <laughs> adult <yeah>. content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a like a Doctor Seuss uh, song about a, a drug filled weekend, that sort of thing. That's um, well, that's what that's what Thurman's Kitchen about. My, uh, I got uh, my my. Um, okay, I was. I had to check to see if my okay. my kid was on Discord, but he's not. He's not subscribed to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, and percussion. I don't know. I I I don't. I mean, I got. I I don't know if I have any influence because I don't feel like I'm am am very good. <laughs> I don't know. I just try and play. Um, I like I drums are the only thing I can kind of pick out. I don't know chord progressions or melody. I don't know any of that stuff. Um, just, I, I don't. I just never learned it. I don't know. But drums I can always pick out and always like pick out what you know. Figure out the count and then figure out oh he's doing this and he's he's doing that with the crash and then I so uh, I I don't know. I just try and play. I uh, but man, so many drummers and percussionists i love uh, pretty much all of them just because i love the drums i don't know if i can say i have an influence on that just because um i just try and play and just like to listen to a bunch of stuff um yeah i love the perfect uh drum solos when they just go in you know how like a uh in a, in a lit in a guitar they can do like a solo and like a like a special solo you just right Kind of like doing it like a fluent way and everything. I like to kind of like even oh try gosh. to work with like with a little bit, but man, I know I get <laughs> with the drums. I know I get beat to dust, man. But sometimes I love to, you know, you know, play play a few little little tunes and stuff like that. Awesome. Uh, it's yeah, it's very it's very cathartic. I think to playing the drums for me at least it's just yeah. I mean. Especially because no matter what you try, you can always try something different. That's true for every instrument, yeah. but I don't know how to play any other instrument. Um, I mean, you can always try some other rhythm. You can always try some other pattern. Um, and it's, you're never going to get perfect the first time. And then you figure it out. And then you get in a groove. And then it's easy. And then you can put it together. All, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I love it. I love it. I could play for hours. Um, yeah. I don't know if anybody want to listen to it. But that's the point, I guess, in play for playing for hours. You're just playing for yourself. I love it. Uh, what do you guys um, like of all and like with uh, you or top or top records like completely? What would be uh, the favorite song that you guys produced? Oh, oh, um, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> um, so at the one like a double eagle song that we produced, um, I uh, gosh, that's tough. There's a there's a couple of, of ones that are my favorite. 
I really like this. So Thurman's Kitchen was the first single. And we did on the B side, we did like a psychedelic beatbox version of that that I really like. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that 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 I like. But I also like this other song that we um, that we uh, uh, well, it was at our third meeting in a cabin in the woods. And even though um, we're you know, I'm, I'm more of a, a daytime indulger, I'd say now I can't I can't stay up late. I mean, I'll still take acid and stuff, but I mean, I I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can't do that at night because it's bedtime. And we, you know, we one night we were like, all right, let's just do this, and you know, at like midnight, and both of us kind of shut down and kind of went interior, and just we both went to the separate bedrooms that we had in the cabin. We were like, all right, dude, well, I gotta go pee alone. And he was like, me too, and we just completely zoned in on ourselves. And, um, and then at about, oh man, what time was it? It was about four in the morning. We went out on the, uh, on the back patio and there was this, and this was in the, I mean, there was no one around. This was in the middle of the woods and there was this massive bat migration that came through. Um, that was crazy that like kind of flew under the little cover of the patio, which was nuts. Beside the point, but interesting story, I think. Um, so then we got up at like five, got up. I don't, we didn't sleep, but we kind of reemerged at five. And I put on this, uh, so I like, I like, I mean, no matter what kind of music, I'll find, I'll find, you know, something, that kind of music that I like. And um, so there's this, uh, I, I really like Indian classical music, especially Indian percussion, which is just absolutely insane. Um, and you mean like uh, Indian, uh, like uh, native, or like you mean like Hindu? No, no. Like I, I mean, I mean the Indian subcontinent. Yeah, I mean Asian Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I, uh, uh, so I, there was a record. So they, there's music that is meant to be listened to at different times of the day, where it's like, okay, this is. So there's this pre-dawn raga that I really wanted to listen to at pre-dawn. So at like five in the morning, I put it on. We always bring a record player, and I always bring records. And uh, so I put it on and um, that was awesome. Just vibed out on it. And then like after we listened to that, like an hour, hour and a half later, like 630, we got up and we just started messing around and we we made up the song on the spot called Pre-Dawn Somewhere because it wasn't Pre-Dawn anywhere it, it, there anymore, but we figured it was Pre-Dawn Somewhere. And um, it was in, kind of inspired by listening to this Pre-Dawn Raga that was, uh, yeah, that was, anyway, so pre on Somewhere, I really like, partially because of that whole story, and it's pretty sweet. I like it a lot, and I recommend you listen to it. If it's in, if it's, if it's your thing, then, then Under the Influence is recommended for pre on Somewhere, but that's another one that I like. Uh, I've heard some, some really good Indian music from, uh, from, from a guy I used to know, his name was, uh, Rouchon, and he had, a. Uh, and he played some of his music, and I was like, "Man, that's a nice little tune right there." They they got some real good, cool like uh, the way their percussion is made, and like how their kind of uh, melody kind of, you know, it it, it it gets to me too. I I enjoy I enjoy I I enjoy all types of uh, of good different music that's not even like westernized or you know, hey, if it's good and it's yeah. got great melodies, you know, it's it. Exactly. If it's good, it's good, no matter where it comes from. Yeah, the percussion is really what gets me um, on on uh, Indian music. It's 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 insane. And when you see people play it, you know, like the tabla, you just play with your fingers, and those fingers are going like a million miles per hour. And there's like you know fifty different sounds you can make depending on exactly which spot you hit with your finger, and it's all precise. And it's like you know a thousand years old and awesome. And yeah, I love it. It's crazy. Uh, like uh, which which famous musician would would you like to uh make a song with? Like it could be anyone you want, like uh, <laughs> like anyone. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. I mean, if I get to pick anyone, I guess I'd 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 go Dr. Dre just because. Dr. Dre. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, shoot, he's he's produced some insane. Yeah, just to just to go with the numbers, right? Um, yeah, I've still listen to two thousand and one. So sometimes, so. oh my gosh, it's so good. I still listen to the Chronic. I listen to all that stuff. So good. Yeah, buddy, yeah, I gotta... real quick. What's up? The uh, how many how many bands or artists do you have on the Ta record label? Ah, so so I I so I don't sign artists. There, we don't. Re- I don't really follow that model only because one. I don't since we're a brand new label. I don't have anything to offer artists. Honestly, I, can, I you know it's hard to sell records. It's really it's insanely harder to sell records than I had ever anticipated. And um, <laughs> so it's not like I can say, hey, I'll sign you and make you money because that's BS. Um, yep. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I don't I don't I don't get rights to songs of other artists um, or anything like that. I just ask if artists want to put out a record. Um, and uh, so let's see how, how many. So there's double legal. I mean, but that's, you know, half me. Um and then, uh, so the compilation LP we have out, Through the Clouds of Smoke, that's 10 artists, so that's Double Eagle plus nine more. Um, and then we did another split single with United Duality from Germany. And then there's the Stress Cones, but really the Stress Cones is Black Eye Butterfly, who was on that compilation, and Billy Korg, who did a remix of a Wink and Woo song on that compilation as well. Um, but then there's a band, a, a band from uh, Durham, North Carolina. I'm working with, um, and there's uh, and then Junk Feathers, like I said, is going to be on that next split, split single. And you know, I, I, that's that's so far. Who is so? How many is that? Let's see. What is that? That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 14, something like that. Right now, fourteen bands um, putting out songs on uh, on Ta on the Wax. <laughs> and then um so, oh so so it works more is not like a traditional label it's more like a power of many to yeah yeah to just spread uh the word. really yeah and really just uh i mean the only thing i i have the rights to is to make a record of this music and sell the record um you know and then and then there's all these sites that you can make um cryptocurrency by playing and i don't mess with spotify because uh, i mean (laughs) yeah no i don't i don't mess with spotify um but you know there's all these sites like emanate that you can uh that you can make some cryptocurrency i remember emanate yeah so that's still going so well you know we have a we have a uh we put all the releases on emanate and if um if an artist doesn't have an account then i'll upload their music and when they do the good thing about Emanate is that it's so easy to share things. So I can put an artist's song on there, say it's Ta Records, with their permission. You know, do you mind if I put this up here? And then they can have an account if they want to. And if they do, then I just transfer ownership to them. Um, so, yeah, re- really just spreading the word. But really it started out by just hearing music that I heard it. Like I said, I collect vinyl obs- obsessively. And... Um, it's more of a, it's it's more of an issue than a than a hobby at this point, but uh, I still love it. I'm still gonna keep on buying records. But I hear music online that I hear it. And I'm like, damn, I would love to hear that on vinyl. That's how it started. And I was like, well, shoot, maybe I can put together a compilation. So it's really so I can enjoy the music on vinyl while at the same time trying to sell the records. So then other people can hear that, enjoy that music on vinyl too, and then maybe learn about some other artists. Cool. I was just wondering how that worked. I'd... Oh yeah, me too. I'm still learning <laughs> stuff too. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I, the first the rush the rush covers thing will be the first time where you know there's some some kind of legal thing that I'll have to do to um to uh you know get the rights to 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 publish covers, which is not a big thing. I mean, there's like a standard a standard thing you pay. Yeah. Um, and, There's a lot uh, of YouTubers that are get do using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that. There's tons of stuff I I completely don't know or understand. But um, I don't know. That's you know. There's plenty of stuff to learn along the way, no matter what you're doing. I guess. <laughs> you like to scratch sometimes on the vinyls, or 
like the, what now? You like do like a little uh, scratch on the vinyl sometimes. Or... Um, a little bit. I I never got. I, I I'm not like a um, you know I I'm not going to be at the the DMC scratch championships or anything. But I can throw oh, I like I can it. cut a beat uh-huh. in a little bit. You know, mostly I I um. I mean, I've got two two Technics and a and a, a Vestax mixer, um, but a, a lot of times I just like the beat match. You know, I like dance hall. We were talking about reggae earlier. I, I like dance hall a lot, where it's a bunch of different lyricists on the same rhythm or rhythm, and um, that's really fun to match and keep like, just keep a rhythm going for a while. Play like five or six songs on it. Um, yeah, but you know, I'll yeah, scratch it, scratch a little bit, but. At the same time, I, I like to I like to respect the grooves too, you know. Just let it ride and play and play full vinyl. And that yeah, I'm 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 more of a of a of a song selector than a scratcher. My dad and my uh, stepmother used to have like a whole bunch of vinyls. Sadly, though, uh, what they their house caught on. Yeah, they had a whole bunch of vinyls, but the house caught on fire a long, long, long time ago. And damn, it was history. Well, yeah, it was, do you remember? Do you remember any of the yeah, records? Yeah, they had so stacks of them. I've seen uh, like oldies and stuff like that, like uh, like fifties and sixties type records. Okay, stuff like that, dude. I sixty soul is my that's that's some sixty soul and funk is that's that's my bread and butter right there. Love That's when music old. was music. 60s. It, it was indeed music at that time. Oh yeah. I've got I got tons of 45s. I love soul and funk 45s. That I could play forever. I could just play one song after another on that. The, the only thing, you know, today's music I'm I'm gonna sound like freaking Bob Seeger, but it, it's <laughs> almost like it doesn't say, have someone's any about soul. To... It, it just doesn't have the soul. I mean, it doesn't have the 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 emotion anymore. It's pretty rare that you, you gotta find, find it. A song. It's, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, obviously, I, I you know most of the crap on the radio is garbage, but um, the um, auto tune. You know, I, crap I, out I, of everything. I I gotta say yeah. one thing though. Yeah, you yeah. guys need to listen to Billy I, I, uh, English because she's got some awesome songs. Oh yeah, is, like really kind of like. I love it, you, but I've heard I her, and I do. I I do know that she. Uh, um, I think she quotes Nine Inch Nails as a big influence. Who I used to be my favorite band. Um, I like them, but yeah, I've heard of her, but I don't know where should we start. Yeah. When the party's over, if y'all ever get a chance, you 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 guys have to listen to When the Party's Over. That song is just When the Party's Over. Yeah, when the party's over by Billy Eilish. 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 Yeah. I'm writing it down. <laughs> it's going on the list. It's going on the list. I like there's a whole bunch of new um new hardcore stuff. There's like some some interesting hardcore reemergence. Um there's this band I just recently learned about called Soul Glow. Have you ever heard of Bad Brains? You know Bad Brains from the early 80s from DC? Boom. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. No, nope. uh, nope. You remember Bad Brains? No, Bad, I don't. Bad Brains was a uh, they they were a, a a hardcore punk band from DC, part of the whole like do it yourself punk punk rock movement. Uh, they were all black Rastafarians, hardcore punk mixed with reggae. And they would go between like hardcore punk with the um with the singer doing like backflips going off on stage <laughs> just those dudes just tore up dc hardcore at the time um but they also would then go into like a dub song and they were all dreaded out rastafarian all that so there's mm. a there's a band that's from philadelphia i just learned about that reminds me of that called soul glow um who like like in uh like in coming to america the same thing glo soul glove um hardcore punk stuff <laughs> um and uh Quite but also some hip hop <laughs> yeah 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 you remember the dude that was the uh the the dude that the um the dude who owned mcdowell's wanted 
his daughter to marry the dude. The prince. Was yeah. The, so yeah. Yeah. The, well, the prince was the dude. Then What's Bobby. the other guy? The, the, then there was the Soul Glow guy who uh, whose dad owned Soul Glow. Yep. Anyway, there's been so them they I've heard and they I don't know there's something about about pissed off punk rock mixed with other genres that um, that gives me that feeling that you were talking about where you're like ah oh, I can hear I can hear the emotion in this one and I'm feeling it. Nice. So since we're we're like halfway through the show and we haven't played any of your music yet. You sent us three that's songs. I, that's because I'd be babbling. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, the first one, one I want to play is uh, the Bullock song. Always mind yeah. the Bullock. Yeah, that's because yep, that's always mine. That's that's where we stayed in uh, Bullock, North Carolina. Was the first cabin that we got on Airbnb. And so you know, a play on Never Mind the Bullocks, but changing Bullocks to Bullock because we were in Bullock. <laughs> So that's what the song is about, is, is staying in, in the cabin? Staying in the Bullock cabin. Uh, yeah, yeah, in Bullock, North Carolina. That's all it's, well, it's an instrumental, but yeah, it's about us going off on a beat for a little while. <laughs> cool. All right, so <laughs> here we go. We're going to play it.
could see like Man. a West Coast rapper or like uh, somebody like Master P just going off on it. <laughs> that yes, awesome. yes. I was picturing a picture of two dudes in a car cruising down the road in black and white with those 1970s rose-colored sunglasses on. You know, just got the windows down, arms hanging out the window, just cruising along, bobbing her head. <laughs> That's freaking cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That one is, uh, I mean, one of our goals is to put out a full-length Double Eagle LP, but I kind of want to try and get, get some other people's stuff out first till we, uh, you know, but that one, that one might go, that might, that might go on a double Eagle LP. We'll see. That was awesome. <clears throat> Rod say it's something about Thanks. it sounds better on Theta. What are you talking um, about? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the, the bass may have gotten swallowed a little bit on whatever that was, that was played on, but bass is sometimes hard to capture. Yes, it is. It goes all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you want to tell us about this next song, Pre-Dawn? Oh, that's okay. Good. I sent you that. I had forgotten. <laughs> oh, well, that was the Pre-Dawn somewhere. That was the story I told earlier, right? So that was the oh, okay. uh, preceded by the, the bat migration and, um, and the Pre-Dawn uh, Indian classical ragas at five in the morning um followed by uh yeah us composing the song spontaneously <laughs> that's cool all right <laughs> so here, yeah, here we go this is pre-dawn what, what's what is it pre-dawn somewhere pre-dawn somewhere yeah okay i can hit the right button
now is that on the percussion parts was that uh oops <laughs> I forgot that it was auto play <laughs> the uh <laughs> the uh on the on the percussion parts there the, was that like real like wood blocks or what was there, that? there was a uh yeah so so there was there's so, so there was a um like a little percussion loop that was on the chord Volca. Um but then there was also I was playing um uh I I, I had a, a a little bit of tambourine that came on at the end, but I was also playing this um this Indian uh this Indian percussion instrument called a a, a South Indian percussion instrument called a, a gatam, which is G-H-A-T-H-A-M which is basically just a big clay pot. Now, I don't know how to play it properly and I because it's a, one of those things that I've tried to find someone, like a, a legit teacher of that instrument in the U.S., but it's it's hard to find someone who teaches the <laughs> gatam. Um, so I'm playing, that's, but it's basically a clay pot, so that's probably what you're talking about. It's almost like a little wood block sounding. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was playing that, a little bit of tambourine, then the, this K oscillator pad, and then there was also a little loop and then as always jojo's the one who does all the melody and the keyboards he's uh so he was on all that stuff and also let's see he he may have laid down a little bass guitar on that too we did we just layered it we just layered it we were on yeah, fire was, that morning there was a lot of stuff in that <laughs> yeah yeah that's what we like to do we just like to yeah just jam on something like we just play around until we hear so or we just start out with a loop one of us might make a loop or we'll just like try and make some basic loop on the spot when someone else has like a little keyboard, you know, a little a little keyboard hook or something. And we just we just add on layers from there. So um, it'll be interesting. We've played live, but we haven't played any of this electronic stuff live, which will be interesting because um, that for not pre on somewhere. I don't think we'll ever be able to recreate that one. That one probably is just going to have to exist as that recording. But the um, but the always mind the bullock. I think we might. I've got still got that loop. We've got those loops, so we we might play that at the uh, Nashville thing and um, and go off on it. And see what else we can put on it. That's that would that'll be, be cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still got to figure out the uh, set list though. It's uh, the I'm driving down there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got to rehearse. We got to we got to make sure we don't. Uh, you know. Hey, hey, have you want? What'd you say, Paul? You cut out. Hold on, hold on. My signal's at. Oh my god! Forgive me, y'all. I can't hear anything. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Sorry, sorry. All right, all right. Anyhow, I was about to say, like, have you heard, last heard anything from the Black Party too? Because I'm trying to get in a little more uh, information before I get there too. It's uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there, there was not a meeting last weekend, but I think this Saturday there's supposed to be one. There's a on on Engine Witty's channel. I mean, on his uh, server at the castle. There's a there's an artists an artist um, invite channel that you should have gotten an invite to. And I think on there is where we're having the um, the Saturday meeting. We just get on the chat there. Yeah. Ooh, so I gotta, see if you can jump on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think he must have sent you an invite, but message him and see if he'll send you another one because that's I've been to one or two of them on there. Uh, I've been on it. I've been on it. It, it was because uh, they had like a little group, and then they moved it to uh to uh his uh the castle channel. Oh right, yeah, yeah. The, there was just that one time we used Zoom, but we haven't used Zoom since then. I got you. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I think we're still, but he's also posting info on Hive too, um, as as it comes out. I mean, like he's still still figuring out the uh, um, figuring out the the venue because um, you got to get that right. I mean, that's that's an important one. But um, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of sponsors already. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Hey, I, I wanted to get a little geeky here real quick. Yes. What do you What do you guys use to do your recording? Oh, 
Um, What's that process <clears throat> like? So that's a that's a JoJo question. That's my partner question. That's the gearhead stuff. So I'm afraid <laughs> that uh, I'm afraid that I don't have a good answer. But I can tell you the original recordings that we did back in 1994 was done done on a uh, handheld four track that nice. <laughs> we that we eventually digitized. We've got a couple of tracks on our SoundCloud that are from those original 1994. Um, recordings that we eventually digitized um yeah 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 we used to use that but um i don't know he's got some fancy crap i don't know any of the he always gets mad at me because i don't know how to use any of the equipment he's like dude i gave that to you to learn three months ago man like i don't know how to do it just show me how to do it i don't know i don't know how to use all the synthesizers the cord volca i learned he gave me that one first and that one's very very like uh um uh i don't know it's 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 very easy because it only does a few things but i mean you can do a lot with it but you can only it's only got a few functions you know in terms right. of programming it um but then once they get complicated i don't know i i, I can't i don't know any of that stuff <laughs> he gets he always gets mad at me <laughs> it's always funny <laughs> that's why we got a sound engineers exactly okay. yeah he is the sound engineer so he's all of our stuff we credit to Limited Precision, Limited Precision Studios, which is him. So I'm Ta Records. He's Limited Precision Studios. Um, so uh, yeah, I have to get. I need to get. I need to convince him to get a Discord account so he can hop on here. But no doubt, you know, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, sometimes he's 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 uh, plus he's got a one year old now. So um, that's that always puts a puts a wrench in the gears. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, we've got one last one here we're going to play. It's uh, the Stress Sweet. Cones. Yes. Dead plate 10. Yes, and, uh, this is the... Uh, a story behind it that you know of? Well, so the um, the the, uh, the Stress Cones, that's Black Eye Butterfly and Billy Cord. And um, Billy Cord does all kinds of... He does, he does rock stuff and punk stuff, but he also does like a bunch of electronic stuff. And... Um, he was just like, hey, uh, hey Black Eyed Butterfly, try and, try and put some lyrics on, uh, on this reggae, on this reggae beat. And he had never written reggae at all. And he just tried it and killed it. And so, <laughs> I mean, just totally killed it on the lyrics and the production. And when I heard it, I was like, dude, we got to put this out. So they did uh, Doing What I'm Doing which is like the, uh, I mean, that's like a normal length, three, three and a half minute song. Um, and, but then they did a dub version of it, which is like six or seven minutes called Dubbing What I'm Doing. And then, um, so that's one side of the 10 inch, three song 10 inch EP. And then the other side is a, a Gentic Maniac, but a 10 minute version of it with just a drawn out reggae like build and everything. Um, nice. Yeah, it was just their first attempt at reggae. And I think they nailed it. Cool. Well, we're going to play it right here, right now. Ooh, if I get it queued up right There he goes. God. I, mean, I love this. My buttons are not working today. I think it's just me. No, it, it, it is you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh. No, not yet. Of course, I forgot to unmute the damn fucking thing on the on the OBS. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. The sun comes up and the sun goes down. The moon fills in when it's not around. The man is gonna have to wait. I woke up this morning and I feel great. All I can say to you is I keep doing what I'm doing, sending my toes head in the sky. Doing what I'm doing, all I can say to you is I keep doing what I'm doing, water on my toes head up. Somebody to be 
this play down in the background here so you could tell everybody where to get your stuff at oh right yeah so uh band camp i'm gonna throw the link on here ta records t-a-h records bandcamp.com um that's uh this one is not on there yet because we don't have the we don't have the record in hand yet but uh yeah we're um We've got the other three records on there. We got a T-shirt on there. Hold on, let me grab this. Let me grab grab this link and uh, we'll get, throw it yeah, in the. Uh, yeah, go ahead and throw it in the chat. We've got less than a minute yeah. left. We wanted to thank you for coming on, and uh, thank y'all for having me. It was it was a blast. It, it was great well, talk with you, man. Yeah, man. Thank thank you all. That's uh, all right, let's see. There we go. There's the the Ta Records merch. Y'all stick around, Ron and. Uh, the clown show is coming up. This uh, uh, <laughs> no. we are. Well, we got left. Still got probably thirty seconds or so. Again, thank you for coming on. Sorry for the time constraint. Yeah, this days. was this was fun. No way. I I talk. I was I was telling <laughs> I was telling beat chains. I'll talk and talk and talk. So yeah. Oh yeah. There's nothing wrong with talking. That's what. It's a talk show. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> exactly. Talk show about music. And we are yeah, out we here. Yep. We so are it should be out with the rock. And nice. I'm going to, Yeah, thanks. Yeah. That was fun. Go jump on it, man. Yeah. We got Lee backed up, Ty. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I'll uh I'll I'll get I'll get some other folks to to come y'all's way to get them on get them on air. Black Eye Butterfly should be he would be a great guest. He's got he's got so much stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll holler at him and, uh, jump feathers. Did he get in touch with you? No, I don't, I don't no, he, he didn't get in touch with me. Oh, uh, okay. But, you know, okay. he's got a little kid too. So, yeah. Sometimes he's hard to get in touch with, but I'll holler yeah. at him and tell him to, uh, I'll tell him to get in touch with you. Um, All right, brother. or I'll send, maybe I'll send a, I'll send a, a group message to both of y'all. <laughs> All right. That's what I'll do. We'll go ahead and play the outro here. All right. Thanks y'all. Here we go, 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 here we go